How much plastic is embedded into your body tissue right now? Well, Professor John Wargo of Yale says much more than you might think. His new book, Green Intelligence, Creating Environments That Protect Human Health, is intended as a wake-up call about the extent to which man-made chemicals are being pumped into the air we breathe, the food we eat, and the water we drink. And he says the companies that produce the chemicals don't want you to know anything about them, even if they might be harmful to your health or the health of your children. The book is published by Yale University Press and is based on Mr. Wargo's years of research at the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. I'm very pleased that it brings him to our show today. Welcome. Well, thank you very much for having me. There are so many aspects of the so-called green revolution, from recycling to refocusing on energy efficiency to local farming. Do you feel too little attention is being paid to man-made chemicals? Oh, I do. I think uh, especially with uh, public concern and and uh, corporate concern about uh, climate change issues, uh, the, the area of chemical exposure and human health risks has been pushed aside. I think it's a problem that is equal in importance, uh, and I also think that it is wildly out of control. So what happens uh, when you try to interest the public in this story? Uh, Is it difficult for people to grasp? No, I don't think it is. I think it's intuitive for most people. Uh, The the exposures that I talk about in the book include uh, uh, radionuclides, pesticides, uh, plasticizers, uh, vehicle exhaust, especially diesel particulate matter. And, uh, you know, most people understand that, that uh, these elements are out in the environment, and uh, they, they just don't know where they are. Now, those five man-made uh, chemicals are extremely diverse. So what do they have in common? Well, w- what they have in common, uh, curiously, is the difficulty that, that humans have in sensing them in their environments. So we can't, uh, we can't see these chemicals, we can't taste them, smell them, uh, feel them. Uh, unless they're parts of of, uh, other larger molecules. Do the organizations involved, which include the U.S. military, automobile companies, the manufacturers of pesticides and the like, do anything to alert the public to the potentially harmful effects that chemical exposure has on our health? In general, no, uh, unless they're required to by law. For example, pesticides have to be labeled under federal law. Uh, but uh, uh, the ingredients of plastic materials in water bottles or in uh, the epoxy lining of a, of a uh, soup can, for example, uh, that does not need to be labeled. And why is that? Well, it's, it's, uh, I, I think that uh, a major failure of environmental law uh, to this time has been uh, the neglect of the chemical industry. Uh, there are some exceptions to that, pharmaceuticals and, and pesticides, uh, but there are nearly 80,000 chemicals in, in international commerce. And these have escaped attention. So let's talk a bit more about plastics. Uh, You you say they've changed the face of the earth and its inhabitants since 1950. Uh, How much much plastic does the average American purchase in a typical year? Mm, Typically several hundred pounds. And uh, we do it incrementally. You know, uh, this this is uh, interesting. I challenge my class of several hundred students uh, every year uh, to uh, spend at least a week of of, uh, our term without buying any plastic. Uh, can you do that? And uh, they come back at the end of the week and tell me, no, they couldn't do it. Uh, that uh, plastic packaging, uh, plastic uh, liners for uh, different food products, uh, water bottles, uh, thinking about uh, toothpaste, toothpaste uh, tubes, uh, brushes. Uh, so it, it's extremely difficult to do. But I've always thought of plastic as inert. Uh, and you say that a lot of it winds up in our body and in, in our tissue. Well, there are many, there are many uh, hazardous chemicals inside plastics. Uh, polyvinyl chloride is a, a good example. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, the scale of this industry I- I- is important to think about. You know, 100 billion pounds of uh, plastics uh, produced every year. That's, a, that's an enormous amount. Uh, and, and only 5% of the plastics produced each year uh, manage to be recycled. So what happens to the rest of it? Well, it goes into uh, either landfills buried in the ground, and uh, you can find plastic uh, uh, components in the, the soils and uh, also in the groundwater beneath landfills across the nation. Uh, and also, uh, if, if the, the uh, plastics are burned, uh, the chemicals are released to the atmosphere, and uh, they can be extremely dangerous, including, including uh, dioxins that, that uh, are recognized to be carcinogens. 
So the, uh, uh, the the failure to demand testing, to uh, require ingredient disclosure, uh, the uh, the absence of a federal plastics law, these are all underlying reasons that explain the situation. Babies start uh, a, a relationship with plastic almost from the start, don't they? Their teething rings are plastic, uh, their bottles, the nipples of their bottles. Well, uh, that that is decreasingly the case, uh, which is, is good news. Uh, but uh, many baby toys are plastic. Uh, you know, 80% of the world's toys now are manufactured in China, and uh, a very large percentage of those are plastics. So if you think about uh, a baby's nursery, I mean, many, family, many, many families will uh, uh, follow their nesting instinct and uh, put down a new carpet that's likely to be plastic. Uh, they'll buy uh, a uh, uh, rail for their, their crib that is likely to be plastic. Uh, the uh, paints on the walls likely have some plasticizers in it. Uh, the and what does that do to their bodies? Well, the, uh, these, do we know? these chemicals don't uh, necessarily stay fixed. Uh, and a good example of that would be uh, a compound known as a, a phthalate. Uh, it has a, uh, an acronym. By the way, this chemical world is a world of acronyms, and uh, you, you, it's difficult to do, but you need to pay attention to it. Uh, and this is called DEHP, and uh, it makes plastic flexible. And what's curious about it is that when uh, DEHP is added to other ingredients, uh, it doesn't bind chemically to those ingredients, which means that it can uh, rub off, it could uh, uh, be brought off in cooking, uh, it could uh, be brought off by microwaving it, uh, so that uh, basically it's quite mobile. And this explains why it gets into uh, the environment and, and can get into our bodies. And uh, a couple of months back, we talked to somebody who had gone out to investigate the great Pacific garbage patch with all of the plastics that float around there. Uh, it's, it sounds terrible, but in the end, uh, does that really do much damage to the environment? Well, I think that uh, it, <coughs> it, it does, and what happens is that uh, many plastics uh, take hundreds uh, or thousands of years to degrade, and 